Today, I'm here to share a bit about how our partnership with the Early Warning System and with International Accountability Project has evolved. Um, and so I've called it Informing Strategy and Resistance Against Industrial Animal Agriculture, which is our specific area of focus. Do you want to go to the next slide, please? Great. And if you want to go, OK, so my aim for the presentation is to give you an understanding of how the early warning system supports efforts to end industrial animal agriculture. And um, next slide. To support this aim, I guess I've got two key questions to answer for you. One, what is the Stop Financing Factory Farming campaign? Who are we and why are we doing what we're doing? And number two, how do we work with the early warning system and International Accountability Project? All right, next slides. Okay, so the introduction to the campaign. If you want to go to the next slide, our focus is on industrial animal agriculture, and that sits within food systems and and agriculture globally. Um, we know that food and agriculture systems have to change because at the moment they are violent, they are unjust, and they are unsustainable for people, for animals, and for nature. And a central issue is the production and consumption of animal source foods, which is meat, but also dairy, eggs, poultry, fish and seafood. And if we look historically in the last 50 years, meat consumption and production <clears throat> has grown so much and it's very uneven and unequal globally. You know, the rich uh, in rich countries, but also rich people within poorer countries consume way more than other people and that's also very unfair next slide and um yeah so the, there are many issues with this kind of meatification as it's been called of diets from the increase in production of uh, animal products deforestation habitat destruction antimicrobial resistance climate change i'm not going to name all of the ones on this list i know for iap you know the human rights side of things and community-led development Indigenous and traditional ways of life and protecting those are very important. <clears throat> There's also issues with all the environmental issues. Oh, God, sorry. And are, are in there as well. Next slide, please. And I won't go too much into this, but we're specifically focused on industrial animal agriculture. And that involves a very kind of cruel and violent process of forcing animals and people into... <clears throat> industrial processes in order to have high yields and really produce a lot of meat and, and products and that means animals are confined there's a focus on they're only important because they can gain weight they can lay eggs they can produce milk genetic alterations are needed to to accelerate those functions and that leads to distorted bodies to animals having sort of self-harm and aggression um, and it also is very reliant upon artificial insemination and physical mutilations of the animals. Next slide. And at the same time, there's a lot of violence involved for the people who work in these systems. Uh, people are really needed to operate machines to kill animals at industrial scale and speed. So the work is very dangerous. It's very poorly compensated. It's traumatic, as well as being physically demanding and, and boring. And we see that animal agriculture has really the some of the highest, if not the highest, ill health, injury and death rates and often relies on migrant labor. So development banks are currently supporting this system. They're supporting the expansion of capitalist agriculture. And um, thankfully, partly to do with the early warning system data, we know that they've invested at least six point five billion dollars directly in this system since 2006. But it's likely much higher because of financial intermediaries and other projects we haven't identified because of the disclosures not being very clear. Thank you. Next slide. But the good news, I guess, is that we believe the development banks can be transformed. They're not, you know, definitely good or definitely bad. They are funded by taxpayers' money. They have got these commitments to sustainable development goals, to Paris Climate Agreement. And we know that <clears throat> social forces like community organizing and public pressure can shape their role and that they could support community-led regenerative food systems and really improve livelihoods as well as respecting human rights and food sovereignty. So that's where we come in. 
we are aiming to end the public financing of industrial animal agriculture overall, but we're focusing on the development banks. Uh, we are resisting the projects that are proposed. We're building the narrative and support for change, and we're advocating for policy change so that these projects are no longer proposed and no longer invested in. Thank you. Next slide. Oh, here's a video. Okay, we can play this video. I think it it's, it shows, um, I don't know if the sound's gonna work, but I was gonna show a video here to give a bit of information about our, one of our projects we've worked on in, in Ecuador with communities who have been affected by a particular big producer funded by the World Bank and ID International Inter-American Development Bank. I guess we can skip past this video because the, the sound's not working, but it was to give a bit of a, uh, a visual illustration of how we're working with communities and with local organizations to monitor a project that's been involved in indigenous rights violations, water pollution, and um, destroying rural and traditional livelihoods. Thanks. So how do we work with the early warning system and why is it so important for our campaign? Next slide, please. Well, the International Accountability Project and the early warning system are really fundamental for our campaign. IAP is a member of our steering committee and we uh, pay funds to IAP and the early warning system to help us identify relevant projects, to submit requests for information, to help us visualize the data that we, we have in aggregate, as well as to support outreach to local organizations, affected communities, and also to help us develop our understanding of the very different uh, regional and local contexts for our issues. And as Vaishnavi and everybody else has highlighted already, we know that the focus of the early warning system is on community-led development. So this process of collecting and organizing the information through to connecting to communities, researching, responding, and advocating. Next slide, please. We have got a slightly complementary and different process for our international campaign, which reflects the way that we work as a kind of coalition of international NGOs. And so alongside the existing process for the early warning system, I guess we've introduced something slightly different where we get the information that's scraped from the banks that's verified and summarized by the early warning system team. And then we're analyzing it and moving into a slightly different mobilization and engagement. Next slide, please. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't change the, the strap at the top of this slide. I, I finished a little bit late with preparing. Go back, please. Uh, I'll talk about it, even though the, um, sorry, can you go back to the previous slide? <laughs> uh, I didn't quite finish the strap of this slide, but what I wanted to illustrate here is that we have a slightly different process that we're following with the early warning system. Um, so we are receiving the information from the early warning system and then analyzing it. Alessandro Rabazzotti from IAP is currently leading on that for us and he's here today. So thank you very much for your work in particular. Together we're um, analyzing the projects that come in on a weekly basis and identifying what's relevant to the campaign. And then once we identify a project that looks like it is industrial animal agriculture, we look into it, we try and research to understand <clears throat> the potential issues in the specific context it's operating. And then we go and mobilize, we speak to local organizations through IAP and through other partners, and we speak to the civil society organizations in our campaign to um, understand if they've got interest and capacity, most importantly, to kind of act on the problems that we're seeing and to raise awareness of the problems and to share concerns where we have concerns. All right, next slide, please. And I think it's important to say that, you know, in light of what's the question that Maurice that you asked about how we define a concerning project and in connection to what everybody's been saying, you know, the community led focus of IAP and the early warning system, our use of the early warning system is a bit different and it is a work in progress. So we're kind of growing our relationship and growing the, the process and really recognizing that there are these different ways of working. And I suppose partly the difference is coming from the fact that 
some of what we're doing is more campaigning at an international level, trying to get policy change in general to end industrial animal agriculture, because regardless of the specific community impact, we know what is likely to happen, because everywhere we see industrial animal agriculture, we see problems with animal welfare, we see problems with the people, we see problems with the environment. And so we're objecting to that in general, but we're also opposing and wanting to support communities that are specifically affected by specific projects. So there's that tension and the work we're doing to kind of combine the campaigning and the organizing approach. Thanks, next slide. This is just a little uh, snapshot of what we do. We have a spreadsheet basically where the magic happens um, and it can be really hard to identify which projects are relevant projects for us because uh, because of the financial intermediaries point, but also because of the limited amount of information that the banks disclose. So um, it's been a real process for us to develop our expertise with IAP and with the campaign members to understand like what are we looking for and how do we classify it and how do we think about which projects are relevant or not. Thanks. Next slide. Um, I thought I would just highlight quickly you know, in the last couple of months, the early warning system and the work of Alessandro and others has been really fundamental to identifying and acting against projects. So the IFC has had three proposed loans in the last couple of months that we have been engaging on, one in Brazil, one in China, and one in East Africa. Two of them are dairy farms, uh, dairy processors, and one is a multi-story pig farm. And they've got a number of risks associated with them. And thanks to the early warning system, we identified these projects with enough time to prepare our response to try and get in touch with the local organizations and understand their concerns and help them uh, to share their concerns as well. Thanks. And um, yeah, I think the other key point is that this information is very important for specific projects, but it also is going to increasingly inform our strategy and our advocacy. We've been talking today about data visualization. It's really key for us to see kind of which banks are funding this kind of project the most, where should we be focusing our efforts for trying to get policy change. And it's also very helpful for being able to communicate to the public and to other stakeholders to say, here, so here's what it looks like overall, and here are the trends. Okay, conclusion, thank you very much. Uh, final slide. Ooh. Okay, we can skip this because there's no sound. <laughs> I was gonna show a video um, to sort of summarize some of what I've been talking about, a bit of a social media video we've been using recently. But in conclusion, uh, the many harms caused by industrial animal agriculture or factory farming are clear. And our campaign is trying to get development banks in particular to stop funding it. International Accountability Project is a part of our steering committee and the early warning system is really fundamental to our activities. In terms of identifying and opposing specific projects and also to inform our strategy in terms of the number, the type, the location and the features of different projects, as well as I guess the way the banks are talking about them and in trying to justify them in terms of food security or trying to justify them in terms of supporting rural livelihoods and things like that. So we're learning the language that the banks use as well and how, how to see through that language. And as I said, I guess, finally, this is a work in progress. We are developing our way of working and um, bringing together, I should have finished that sentence, bringing together different ideas and different perspectives. Um, but it's it's really a pleasure to be doing that and to be working with everybody here. So thank you very much for listening. Thank and you so much. Uh, sorry, Kisha. I was just gonna say, sorry, I hope I didn't speak too quickly. Uh, yeah. <laughs>